Hello, welcome to Starting Map Tool. Uh, this tutorial is first going to cover downloading and installing Map Tool. Which, yes, this is a very easy thing. But the developers of Map Tool have given us a couple options outside of the default settings, which some of you may find useful. So I'm going to cover those. And then also, while uh, most people have no problem with Map Tool starting right up, there is the occasional issue. So I will cover a couple of easy troubleshooting measures that seem to often fix things when there is a problem. So first, installing Map Tool. It's very easy. Just go to rptools.net. You have two options: the launch button here, or the download button. So go to launch. You have your different tools and the different versions. Um, 1.3 will soon be out of development into release, but so you just click on the link that you want, and this box will pop up. You have open with selected, and you should have Java Web Start Launcher in here. You just click OK, and that's it. It's all automated and installs it on your machine, and uh, gives you a nice little shortcut on your desktop. Now, this customization tab down here is part of the options I was talking about earlier. I'll get to that in just a moment. And then first here to your second option, the downloads. Hit the downloads button. You have, your, again, your different tools. Uh, click on the one you want. The map tool here, you have this big list right now because it's still in development. When it's finished, you'll just have the one of version 1.3. What you're doing here is downloading a zip folder. So you'll click on the link, and you'll just hit save file. For those of you who don't know what a zip file is, it just looks like a little folder here with a zipper across it. And it's really just a convenient way to package a bunch of files together. But what you need to do after you download it to make it usable is to extract it. So you just right click on it and if you have Windows you have an extractor built in but some people don't like using Windows Extractor so there are some free ones out there. I use 7-Zip. I got from 7-Zip.org. In any case you just go to Extract Files and click OK. And it's just that fast. Boom! There you go. And Now you have your folder that you can open up and run Map Tool from. And what many people like about this is you're not actually installing anything on your computer. Everything to run the program is within this folder. So if you want to upgrade to a different version or just stop using Map Tool or, or whatever, you can just delete the folder or you know put it put it onto a disk or something and take it to another machine. So it's real convenient. In any case, here are your different launchers. If you have a Windows machine, it's your uh, Windows launcher here. Uh, over here is your launcher for a Mac. But you just double click on them and boom, this will pop up. Um, again, here are those memory options I was talking about. I'll cover those again in a moment. Or actually, I have nothing else to cover with the launcher. That's it. So, you know, launch map tool is fairly simple. So, I'll just get right into the memory settings. And whether you're adjusting them here or back on uh, uh, the launch page under customization, in either case, they do the same thing. Um, I'll first start with stack size, where the stands for is 2 megabytes. Um, Odds are you'll never have to touch this. The only way you would think about it is um, if you're using some very intensive macros, which you'll learn what those are later, but if you're using some very big and long ones where you're activating them they're like a shortcut and the code starts flickering in the macro window or they lag a long time or freeze up, maybe you increase this to a 3 or a 4. But odds are 2 will be plenty for anything that you use. And what you have up here is the min memory and max memory. Um, min memory, just leave as it is. The max memory is what you may need to change at some point. This is how much RAM is being allocated to Map Tool. You can see the default here is 256 megabytes. Um, for most people, for if you're doing smaller, like in encounter type maps, which can actually get to a decent size, uh, 256 megabytes will be plenty. And just how, so you know how much. Uh, up map tool here, how much memory you actually are using. Down in the corner over here, um, see those two numbers here? 35 is actually how much memory, how many megabytes is actually being used. This is how much is allocated at this point. So, you know, if this number is creeping up and you're getting to some larger maps, you know, if you're starting to make you know, chunks of a city more than just, you know, say a building or something like that or a larger sprawling dungeon, you may need to, you know, increase it to 500 megabytes or, you know, a gigabyte even. Uh, just so you know, the maximum you can ever increase it to is uh, 1.5 gigs, which would be 1,500 megs. In any case, if you are running a session and uh, this number is creeping up towards your maximum, you can double-click on this, and you see how it dropped down right there. That sort of clears out the cache and gives you a little extra breathing room. But, again, to start off with more, you just change this number. You know, change it to 512 or 700 or whatever you want to change it to. But, again, the max is 1,500 megabytes. Uh, now, some things to be aware of with this, and this is when I'm getting into some of the uh, troubleshooting things, is if you have a group of people that are gaming, so you have, say, five people networked or something like that, you should all be at the same memory usage. Because, for example, let's say four of you are running at 500 megabytes and one of you are running at the default of 256. As soon as the usage gets up you know, above that 256, that guy with the lower memory is going to start freezing up or getting kicked off the network. So that's one thing. 
Another is be aware of how much resources your computer has. For example, um, let's see here. How, how much memory, how many gigabytes of memory your computer actually has because your operating system, you know, your Windows, takes up a chunk of that memory. For example, if you have a, a com older computer that has say 512 megabytes of RAM in it and you're running the latest version of Windows XP, that op your operating system XP is probably going to want more than half of that memory just for itself. So if you're opening up a uh, map tool then with this much, you're going to be maxing out your memory. You could start to see some little bit of slowness and lag. So that's one thing to look at is if you're starting up map tool and your whole system seems to be start bogging down, look at how much memory you're starting a map tool up with and then look at how much memory your computer has. Because like I say, Windows XP can use up a chunk and you have Vista. Vista is a real memory hog. It can take up an even larger chunk. So a lot of times either starting up map tool with a little bit less memory or it's RAM's really cheap nowadays. Just upgrading your computer will help you for you know other programs as well. That can help things. And then the final thing I'm going to cover is updating your Java. Um, this is one of the things, if someone's having a problem, one of the first things we tell them to do is just to update your Java and make sure there's no issues with that. For those of you who don't know what Java is, it's just an independent platform. It's what uh, Map Tools is programmed in. It's the programming language. And it's a, it's a neutral platform, so it can be run off of Apple or Windows or Linux or whatever. In any case, Java is used quite a bit out there, so most computers have it on it already. The odds are that you have it, but what version do you have? Now, Map Tool version 1.3 does run off, the, can run off the older version of Java. Right now, you can see they're up to version 6, but if, version 5 should work fine for Map Tool as well, at least for Windows XP. Um, for Vista, there have been some issues with the older one, so if you have Vista and you have problems with Map Tool starting up, upgrading to the latest version can fix, fix some of the pathing issues they were having. But in any case, um, just you know, Google update Java. You should get this little website right here. It has a nice little tool here where you can hit verify now and it tells you what version of Java you have on your computer. And if it's not the latest one, um, you can just you know, click on the link here and download the installer. It is a nice thing to do if you're having any problems with map tool starting up or func functioning correctly, just to make sure it has nothing to do with Java. So now if you are still having some sort of problem with map tool, next thing to do is just go to the map tool forum. Um, go to arptools.net, hit community, and go to forums. We're very lucky here. We have a very active community, and there's some people who really know what they're doing tech-wise, and they're very active on these boards. So if you just go you know, down to... Uh, the map tool form here and just tell them what your problem is and be as detailed as possible. You know, give them what version of map tool you're using, what operating system you're using, you know, how much RAM you have, just as much detail as you can think of what's going on and your own system resources. And people are usually very quick about responding and if they need any more information they'll ask you and give you different options of, of what might fix the little quirks that you're having. So that's it. Like I said, most of you won't need the troubleshooting part, but if you do, do those couple things I'd mentioned, and if it doesn't work, go to the forums. People will help you almost right away.